In this video, we're going to see a little hidden gem in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. It's going to be all about the user stop typing behavior. Tune in. Before I start talking about the user stop typing behavior, I want to take a little moment and give a big shout out to my members of this channel who are supporting me um, while doing this. If you want to do that as well, click that little join button on the channel and see what it's all about. Um, specifically, I want to do a big shout out to Daniel Plaire. I hope I pronounced that right. Thank you so much for becoming the latest member on the senior developer tier and you got yourself a shout out on this video. So. There you go, this one's for you. So for the user stop typing behavior, um, whenever I had to implement like a search bar, um, you do not want to send every keystroke out to uh, the backend server, right? Because that's a whole lot of requests going back and forth um, and the users not even stop typing. So you don't know if the results are going to be any good. To overcome that, you want to implement some mechanism to detect if the user is still typing and only when they stop typing for a certain amount of time, you want to do that request going back and forth. Um, that involved a lot of code. Um, you had to copy and paste it into each of your projects. At least I had to do that, change it a little bit, tweak it a little bit. Now you don't need to do that anymore um, because John, thank you for your contribution, um, has implemented this in the user stop typing behavior, uh, which is now in the Xamarin Community Toolkit. So you can just use it as a behavior, a couple of parameters to tweak what you want to do and boom. So let's just go check it out. Here we are in Visual Studio for Mac 2019. Um, on the left, you can see the example that you will get from a file new Xamarin Forms application, just the default template that you get out of the box. It's running on the iOS simulator here on the right. And the really cool thing is that we can just start editing here in our example and we can say user stopped typing behavior sample. And whenever we save that, it automatically updates on the right. Uh, also works on uh, Android, of course, your physical devices. So that's really cool. This is hot reload and you can just iterate over your XAML changes without having to stop your application. So that is really cool. Of course, everything also works on Windows. Um, now, what I want to do is something that we can do with hot reload. So I'm going to stop the application right here, go into my solution explorer and actually click the solution level here all the way at the top. I'm going to say right click and say manage NuGet packages because I'm going to install the examine.community toolkit and we have it right here. At the time of recording, 103 is the latest stable package. So I'm going to add it, select all three of my project, do OK. Um, technically, for the thing that I'm showing you today, uh, we don't need to install it on all of our projects. But you know, whenever you start using controls or something, then you also want to have the renderers in your platform specific projects. So we're going to install it on all of our projects. Um, but for the user stop typing behavior, you just need that shared bit of code because it's just a behavior that you can attach to a Xamarin Forms control. Um, so with that in place, I can actually start, well, not, let's not start running it right away. I'm going to remove these labels right here and I'm going to add a entry because we want to do this with an entry or a search bar or basically anything that allows you to input text um, with a user typing. And I'm going to, um, well, not do it like this. I'm going to make it a closing one like this and give it a little margin so it looks a little bit better. Here we go, 20. And then inside of that entry, we can add the user stop typing behavior. But before we do that, we need to add a little namespace here at the top of our page. So I can say XML and S, which is XML namespace, um, XCT is, and then right here we have one of those fancy URL things toolkit. Um, and that contains all the controls and behaviors and effects, everything that we have in the toolkit. So that's really cool. Um, and now we can say entry dot behaviors. Um, so that's something that you can put into the behavior. Behaviors is something that is in each control. Um, and we can say XCT um, user stop typing behavior. There we go. And let's actually see what kind of the APIs is for this. So this is a command and a command parameter. That is whenever it's triggered, um, then we can invoke this command and we can also specify a parameter. By default, the parameter will be the text that is typed in this entry, uh, but you can override it to be something else if that's what you want. Um, so what else do we have? I think we have some kind of um, user stop typing time threshold. Wow, that's a mouthful. 
Um, and there you can say like, hey, how long do you want to uh, wait for the user to stop typing to actually um, um, fire the command that we've just seen? And another option is to do should dismiss keyboard automatically. So that's cool. Whenever the command is then fired, it will also automatically dismiss the keyboard. Um, so that's not in your view anymore too. Um, by default, it's false, um, which you know is probably makes the most sense. But if you have a scenario where you want to dismiss the keyboard automatically, um, that is definitely something that you can do. And the last one is very cool too, is the minimum length threshold. So you can also set like a minimum length um, that the um, um, text in the entry needs to have before the command is fired. So let's play with this. Let's set the user stop typing time threshold, whew, um, which is in milliseconds. So let's set this to one second, a thousand milliseconds. And here I'm going to say the minimum length threshold is going to be three, just to make it interesting. And the command is going to be um, a binding, of course. Um, user stopped typing command, there we go. And whenever I hook this up, then I can start running and change some things in the example. So let's now go to our code behind. So I'm going to go to the solution main page. Here we go. Uh, now, of course, normally you would want to do this in your view model, but right now I'm going to, you know, it's sample code. So I'm going to put this in this uh, page right here. So I'm going to do public command um, user stopped typing command. I think I named it. There we go. Get set, make it a property. Very important. Um, then we want to set the user stop typing is new command. There we go. Um, actually, I'm going to do another thing. Um, I'm going to add this is a stack layout. So I'm going to add a little label here label, uh, no text, just a name um, result text. There we go. And I'm going to put the result in here. Um, so we're going to have this new command. And let's first do this actually. So what we want to do is result text is um, let's make it something static. And I will look into making it a little bit different after that. So here we go. Whenever that command is fired, we're going to say triggered. Um, um, and actually, let's do another thing. So you can see that it triggered uh, just that once. So we're going to do um, a little int here count is zero. And what we're going to do then in this command we're going to make it a method body here. Do it like this. And hopefully format this a little bit nicer. There we go. And I'm going to say count plus plus. So we're going to do at one. I know we could do it in line. Um, but I'm just choosing to do it this way count and do it like this. So you can see whenever it's actually invoked. Um, so with this, oh, let's not forget to set the binding context because then we'll be in trouble. It's going to be this, there we go and run it. And we should see our sample app coming up again with the entry right now. And so the cool thing is I set it to uh, the threshold of uh, a thousand milliseconds and the minimum length of three. So whenever I'm doing one, two, nothing happens. And whenever I keep typing here, nothing happens to I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, I'm typing, nothing happens, nothing happens. And I stop and nothing happens too. <laughs> um, I was not expecting that. So what might happen here is that this gets run on another thread or something. Um, so let's see what happens if we do invoke on main thread. Um, do we have begin? No device begin invoke on main thread. There we go. <clears throat> and to wrap it in this one like this. Okay, let's see if it works now. So maybe this does something on a separate thread or something, the behavior works on a separate thread. And whenever you want to do something back on the UI, we're going to have to wrap it in this. So let's see with some other random string like, did you subscribe to my channel? And whenever I stop typing, you can see it triggered once. 
Um, and you can see as long as I keep typing, I keep typing and I don't hit that one second threshold or it's less than three, uh, nothing happens to you. Um, but if I go beyond that again and I stop typing, then boom, you can see trigger two. Um, so that's how the user stop typing behavior works. Um, now, of course, I uh, it would also be nice to get the actual value of the, the, the thing that you're typing here. Um, so let's stop this again for a little bit. And we're going to say, okay, I want to make this a command string. So now we know that the uh, first parameter of this command is going to be a string. Um, and that's actually the thing that's provided by um, this behavior. So we can just say new command string here too, because this has to match. Um, and then we have to specify a parameter here. So we can actually have the value. Um, we can, you know, remove this count. I'll, I'll leave it here for now. Um, but I can here say value um, value, there we go. And now it should also give us the value. So if we run it again, we don't just have the count and you can see it's triggered and do your, your other action, but you will also get the value. So you don't have to go out and to your entry and actually get the value. Did you subscribe now? And whenever we stop, you can see the value is um, in there as well. So that is really cool. Um, so you don't need to, you know, access your entry or this is probably used a lot with your search bar and you don't have to X name your search bar or your entry and get the um, value from there. It's just provided within the command. So that is pretty cool. I don't know about you, but I always had to implement a lot of code to do just this. And now with a few lines of XAML, of course you can do it also in C sharp code, but with a few lines of XAML, um, you can just detect if that user has stopped typing yes or no and fire that command, go out to your backend server, get the search results or do whatever you want with this behavior. That is pretty cool. Thank you so much for watching another video. Please click that like button, subscribe to my channel, ding that bell to be notified automatically of new content and I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.